Hey, it's Ross from RossLukeman.com. Today I'm going to be comparing a couple of excellent battery monitors from Victron Energy. We have the Smart Shunt as well as the BMV 712 Smart. And at their core, these are very similar battery monitors. They both have a 500 amp shunt at the core of their construction. And they're also both going to put out a Bluetooth signal so that you can pick up data on the Victron Connect app on your smartphone or tablet. So you can be sitting in the driver's seat of your van or RV or you can be walking around the outside and you can pull up that real-time data. It's gonna tell you things like voltage, how many amps are going in or out of your batteries, how many watts are going in or out. And it has a feature called time to empty that's gonna show you at your current rate of consumption how long you have before your batteries are empty. So that's really handy if you're running a energy hog device such as an electric stove or an air conditioner. It's gonna tell you, you know, you have 45 minutes until your batteries are empty. So in general, battery monitors are a great way to essentially have a fuel gauge for your battery. If you think of your batteries as a fuel tank, uh, without a battery monitor, you kind of don't have a fuel gauge. So you can imagine driving around in a car and uh, not, not knowing how much fuel you have in the tank. It could be kind of scary, especially if you're out on the highway between cities. Uh, you don't want to worry about running out of power. So a battery monitor is going to tell you how much you have in the tank in your batteries and uh, keep you from running out of power out there. So that's kind of the number one uh, use of the battery monitor is as a fuel gauge, essentially. But uh, Victron makes an excellent battery monitor. As you'll see at the end of this video, we're going to wire these into an overall system and uh, run some loads through them. And we're going to take a reading and I'm going to show you the Victron Connect app at the end. But first, what I'd like to do is zoom in on each particular one and uh, compare how they differ. But uh, before we do that, if you're interested in getting a jump start on your van electrical system and you're not really sure how it all goes together and where to start, I've got an excellent resource called the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet. You can download it at rosslukeman.com slash vanpower. And uh, this cheat sheet is going to show the strengths of shore power, solar power, and alternator power, and how they work together to give you kind of a well-rounded power strategy. And uh, there's a comparison of different battery chemistries and the strengths and weaknesses of different battery types. And there's also an excellent diagram that shows how multiple power sources, such as solar, alternator, and shore power, come together and get distributed not only to your batteries, but also all the way out into your van and power things like your lights air conditioners, etc. So it's an excellent resource if you'd like to get a jump start on your van's electrical system. All you have to do is go to rosslukeman.com slash vanpower or you can click the link below. So with that, let's get started and uh, we'll talk about the BMV 712 first. So let's take a look at the BMV 712. You can see we've got the shunt. You've got a little uh, jack here. This is an RJ12 jack that connects to the back of the screen. We've got an RJ12 cord that comes with the battery monitor. You want to watch out. This does look like a phone line, but these are six pin connectors. A phone line would be four pin. And uh, make sure you get an RJ12 cord if you don't use the one out of the box. But basically, this is going to take the measurement and the screen has a circuit board in there and that's going to do the calculations. And this is also going to send out the Bluetooth signal from the screen itself. We've got a couple of other inputs here. Because the negative battery cable is gonna run through the shunt, all we have to do is connect one little positive wire and the shunt will be powered up with a positive and a negative charge. And it's gonna send that power via the cord over to the screen to power the screen up as well. We do have a second input here. This was introduced with these later models from Victron. You can measure not only your battery, but you can uh, measure a second input. So that can be a uh, engine battery voltage. It can be a midpoint voltage of your battery bank. So you would connect to the middle of your battery bank and it's kind of like taking an average voltage of all the batteries. And the last thing you can program it to do is take a battery temperature. So if you wanted a readout of what your battery temperature was on this screen, you could uh, plug in a temperature sensor there at that second input as well. And you'll notice with the smart shunt, it also has those same two inputs and that same capability. But basically, 
this is going to put out the Bluetooth signal and a lot of people are just going to be using their smartphones or tablets and at some point you know this may become superfluous or not needed and uh, just becomes wasted money. This is about $206 and the Smart Shunt is $130 so it's about $75 more to get the screen and if you find yourself using your smartphone for everything and uh, constantly checking it with that this is just really not needed and then if we throw in a GX device this is kind of a, a wild card but um, Victron makes these GX devices that will basically network your solar your alternator your shore power your inverter everything together and show everything on one screen show your entire system and you can see on the bottom left of the GX device is going to be your battery monitor I'll show you here we have a VE direct port on the smart shunt and a VE direct port on the back of the BMV 712 screen so you would run that uh, VE direct cord to the back of your GX device either a color control like this or they have the new Serbo GX but you're going to plug that battery monitor into here and um, that's when you know you're spending $75 more for this screen uh, seems like wasted money if you're just going to network it to here especially if you're going to cluster your instrument panel in one place in your van or RV it's going to clutter up your wall and you really don't want this screen there with the main screen so you would you know really just want to display this screen and uh, this you start to wonder where sh where you should put it and it becomes really just in the way so that's where the smart shunt comes in if you're going to do the GX device just network that directly to your GX device and this becomes part of the story um, if you're going to have a more advanced monitoring system and uh, this will tie in with all your other uh, power metrics there at the GX device and then also if you, even if you don't have the GX device if you're just going to use your smartphone or tablet to monitor your batteries or uh, a big one is if you're retroactively putting this in and you can't put the cord in the wall maybe your walls are closed up you can't run this line you can just install this in your power system it's going to put out that Bluetooth signal right from your power system and you don't have any lines to run um, so there are several reasons why you might want to get the smart shunt and uh, again it's $75 less because it doesn't have that screen and uh, it's it's all you need if you're going to network that battery monitor to a GX device. So I hope that all made sense. At this point, let's wire one of these into a power system and we'll take a reading. All right, so I've chosen to wire in the BMV 712 and you can see I put a little shunt bus bar there on the negative lug on for the outgoing line. This side says battery only, so we're going to connect battery negative and then we're going to connect the all the other negative lines from the chargers and loads to this bus bar so it's the same on the positive these are both bus bars they just are different shapes but they do the same job basically they're distribution points for positive and negative negative. and I will say over here I would typically add a fuse and a switch but for our demonstration I'm keeping it simple so that you can see how the battery monitor itself is wired so you can see I've got a little positive wire. This comes with the battery monitor. It's got a little inline fuse connected to positive and then it runs over here and I plugged it into the B1 terminal. And then we've connected our RJ12 cord and I've connected that to the back of the display. So this, you can scroll through the settings. There's battery voltage 13.0, amps is zero because we don't have any loads or chargers. So there's no power transferring through here. Uh, watts is zero amp hours uh, and it's telling us we have a hundred percent charge so this is also putting out the Bluetooth signal so I'm gonna pull up the app and we should be able to pick up the data so we're now pulling data from this device into the app and we have all the same numbers 13 volts zero amps zero watts and then we have time remaining so this is that time to empty feature that I told you about and it says infinite because nothing's moving there's no loads or, or chargers uh, it's an infinite amount of time until the battery is empty 
So you can see we have a gear icon as well. And if I click on that, I can program the uh, battery monitor. I can tell it how much battery capacity we have. So right now we're dealing with 160 amp hours for this battery. And uh, so I was able to program that. And then the way that these battery monitors reset is it gets above a certain threshold voltage and then the current or the flow into the battery slows down to a trickle and you hit certain conditions and it resets to 100%. So you can read more about that in the manuals, but um, that is how it knows to reset to 100%. And um, one thing I wanna show you, let's go ahead and put a load. So I have a string of puck lights. That's gonna be our load. I wish I had something more robust that was going to take more power, but uh, we'll pull two or three watts out of the battery with those puck lights and uh, get an update on our stats here. All right, so we've got our puck lights wired up here and we'll just turn them on. By the way, this is a Kitast dimmer, uh, K-I-T-A-S-S-T. -S uh, you can find it on Amazon. And we've got actually three of these puck lights. You can only see one of them, but there's a string of three and uh, that's going to be our load. You can see I've tied in red as our positive. This is a uh, marine safety duplex cable, so the negative is yellow instead of black, but that's why I've tied the yellow in here on our negative bus. And uh, we've got a load. Let's take a look at the app. All right, so we're at negative 2 watts, negative 0.19 amps. We are dropping to 12.99 volts. We were at 13. You can see the time remaining is now down to 10 days, zero hours. It used to say infinite. And um, that is gonna continue to drop. We still have a 100% state of charge. We're not pulling a whole lot of power out, but that'll eventually drop to 99% and uh, so on. But what I'm gonna do, I've got a little remote here for the dimmer. So let's turn that up. And you can see we're now pulling seven watts, 0.54 amps. So it's an immediate change. Uh, as soon as you change the loads on the battery, whether it's power going in or out of the batteries, this is gonna update instantaneously. So pretty cool. But that is the gist of the BMV 712. Uh, the Smart Shunt is gonna have essentially the same capabilities. One thing the BMV 712 has, it's a feature I honestly never use. But uh, it has a relay here, and you can program it with the app. You just hit this gear icon, and uh, you can program the general settings of the battery monitors. But also, this one has a line that says relay, and you can basically set this relay to go off when the uh, battery gets down to 50% or 30%. You can have the relay switch go off and turn on a generator or turn on the engine, things like that. Like I said, I've never used it, but that is a feature on the BMV 712 that's not on the Smart Shunt. Something to note. But in general, you can um, update the firmware in the battery monitor. You can do the program, the settings, and of course you can take uh, a look at your real-time data all with the app. So it's pretty cool. All right, so that's all I've got for you today. If you would, leave me a comment down below and let me know which battery monitor you think is right for your situation, either the Smart Shunt or the BMV 712. And if you want additional help and a jump start on your van's electrical system, go to rosslukeman.com slash vanpower to download the ultimate van power cheat sheet and get started with your electrical system today. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.